Great, so I'm gonna start my video so you guys can see me and um, share with you my presentation. All right, so um, I am the collections database coordinator for the Snipe Museum of Art. I'm on a three-year Mellon Foundation grant project um, that was awarded to the University of Notre Dame. And uh, my position was um, specifically designed to clean up the collections management system that we have at the Snipe Museum, which is Embark. Um, and for those who are not familiar, it's a gallery systems product similar to TMS. So it has the capability of linking um, AAT terms to object records in the form of uh, keywords. But previous to me um, coming to the museum, this module wasn't being used properly. So instead of catalogers picking from um, controlled thesaurus, they were just entering terms into basically a flat hierarchy. So one of the uh, projects that I work on, worked on was migrating these like flat terms basically um, into um, the AAT structure in Embark. And as I was doing this, I realized that not all the terms I needed were in the AAT. So I started contributing to the thesaurus based on um, our collections. So I'm going to show you kind of some of the things that I've learned just by trial and error, um, but I really want to hear from everyone else about your experience or um, things that I maybe don't know that much about or ways that I can improve um, my current process. Um, so there are three ways to contribute to the Getty thesauri. You can email them, um, you can batch upload terms, or you can use the web forum, which is what I will be showing everyone today. Um, to get started, you just need to email Getty and get a user ID and a contributor ID. And um, I have included instructions in the startup guide, which um, Gail included in the um, call invite, and it's also in the meeting minutes. The other thing you need is Internet Explorer. So I'm actually using a Mac right now, um, but I am accessing Internet Explorer through um, Microsoft Remote Desktop. So um, Embark has to be used through a PC environment. So we all have um, remote desktop already logged or already uploaded onto our computers. And that's how I interact with the web forum. And um, the web forum allows for you to add to three different thesauri. So if you click this little down arrow, you'll see the different choices here. So AAT, TGN, and ULAN. You can't add to um, the Kona thesaurus yet, I'm guessing because it's pretty new. Um, and you just have to email Getty directly, but hopefully they'll build out a, a forum in the future. So to get into the forum, you just have to <clears throat> add your username, your contributor ID, choose which thesaurus you want to contribute to, and I'm going to show you the AAT first, click login, and this is what the online form looks like. So I actually wanted to do a live demo with you guys, and I realized this morning that um, on all of these forms, they uh, populate your contributor ID, which is actually my password, so <laughs> I couldn't show you this today. Um, live, these are just screen captures, but um, if you were to log in, this would already be populated. And then you just have to fill in your editor name and an editor email. So I'm guessing that the way it works is that um, each institution gets their own um, name and contributor ID. And then if you have multiple people contributing, they, um, this is how you differentiate their contributions. Um, the next field, oh, I should mention too that these red Asterisks are all the um, required fields that you need to populate. Um, so the um, next field here, you can um, indicate whether you're contributing a new term to the thesaurus, or um, if you uh, click this down arrow, you can also comment. So if you find a correction that you need to make to one of the terms, this is how you would also um, submit a correction. 
And then probably the most difficult part of this whole thing is to um, just figure out what part of the hierarchy you want to add your term to. And that's what this preferred parent um, is. You just uh, put in the term name and then the term ID. And I just do that by searching the AAT online for a comparable term to kind of copy the structure that they've already established. This next section here is where you actually put in the term that you want to contribute. So they have these little um, gray uh, words over here to help you understand what each of these fields are. And if you also click the blue uh, field names, it will give you more information about how to populate them. What's not immediately apparent is that you also have to click these blue um, words underneath the fields and you can see they're required with an asterisk. This is actually where you record the source of your citation. And for AAT, I just use um, online dictionaries as my source. And then um, the final part is to just add a note and that's basically a definition of the term. And again, you have to cite uh, the source of that and the scope language, which is typically English for the ones that I'm contributing. Um, and then in the corner here, um, there's this pending candidates PDF. So typically what I do is I click submit and it kind of goes into a black box and I'm not really sure what happens to it. Um, but if you click that um, pending candidates PDF, you get this really long PDF, which is like over a thousand pages. And typically what I do is I just control F and find um, the SNITE as the contributor here. And I can see the terms that presumably haven't been published yet, but I've submitted. So this is sort of, um, I'm guessing they're holding place before they go live. And you can see they have an ID. I'd love to know what this candidate status is here. I don't know what that means. And it seems like they have the, the structure here for you. Um, so that's another thing that I've been sort of playing around with, but would love to learn more information about. Um, I also wanted to show you what ULAN looks like. Um, so again, it looks pretty similar, but you have a lot more information that you have to submit about the artist record um, that you're submitting. So the top looks pretty similar. You have the basic information. You have the option to create a new um, record or to um, correct an existing record. Um, the record type is important to remember. So if you are submitting a manufacturer, for instance, you want to make sure to change this to be corporate body. And then I believe it populates this preferred parent for you. So that's easy. Just like the AAT, the second box is for the actual term that you're submitting. Um, and again, they tell you what they want here. So it's usually the um, inverted name and then the natural order. And I wanted to show you, again, you have to cite your source. So if you click on this, this is what the dialog box looks like. And um, it seems to me that Getty really loves um, LC, the LC authority. So they even have a flag here for you to tell them that you're citing um, their, the LC name authority. Um, and then this is where you cite the actual source. So I put the, the URL link usually here. And then if you click this little magnifying glass, you can write, you know, LC name authority file. Um, and that's how you fill in this, um, this dialog box, which again, wasn't um, initially apparent to me and, and I had to figure it out through a lot of trial and error. So I wanted to show you, this is a draft that I had of a uh, term to submit. Um, and again, I'm submitting terms based on the Snites collection. So we have a work by David Lockwood. And um, you can see here in the next section, this is a little bit different than what was in the AAT. They have this display biography, which again, um, I just follow their style on the side here. The um, actual life dates of the artist are put into the display biography. 
And then these birth and death dates are just for searching. So if it's a living artist, for instance, I just add 100 years and that part doesn't get displayed. It's in, just in the back end part for searching. If you have a birth date and death date, you add those there. And again, it's linked to their TGN. So that's really useful. They have a preferred um, nationality and an additional nationality. And you can even add more uh, nationalities if you need to and use the sort order. The preferred role is typically defaulted to um, artist, but if you wanted to be more specific, like I did here, um, there's a bunch of different roles that you can choose from, and then um, the sex of the artist. Um, and then just like the AAT, they have this descriptive note field where I put a little um, thing about the artist being known for painting and commercial art. I've cited my source here. Um, the URL is in that additional dialog box that we saw before. And this is just the ID for that particular um, source that I, that I sorted. And then the scope language is, is just English. So then submit candidate goes into the black box. And then hopefully when you're on ULAN, you'll see the records that you created. So it's kind of fun. Um, I'm showing you one here that I submitted and you get to see that it's the SNIT. It shows you, I used, um, instead of LCA, I actually used VIOB for these, these records. And then for the additional note that I wrote, I used the Yale's um, art gallery website. Um, so hopefully in the future, when we get our collections online, we'll be able to um, link to our actual collections. But for now, without them being online, I'm not really sure how to do that yet. So a lot of times I just link to other um, collection websites as my source. And then quickly, I just wanted to show you what the Kona thesaurus looks like. So again, this is a pretty new thesaurus and I've been using it a lot, um, mostly because the project I'm working on, um, they, for the keywords, they want very specific uh, terms. And um, because I work for a Catholic university, a lot of the terms are very specific religious iconography. Um, so Kona is really great because it has a controlled vocabulary for all of these different religious characters and even um, different religious scenes. So, you know, we have tons of nativity scenes, for instance, and they have each one of the different um, cycles, I guess, of um, Christ's life cataloged in a particular way. So it's much easier for me to catalog these things um, and relate back to a preferred term than trying to think of, okay, what is, what is the nativity scene called? Is it the adoration of the shepherds or, you know, all these different kinds of um, scenes that come from, from that story. Um, so here I'm showing you one that I submitted. Um, again, you can't use the online form for this. You just have to email Getty right now. Um, and you can see again that they have the Snipe Museum, um, the date it was submitted, and this one's actually looks like it's still in processing. So again, just learning about kind of all this by trial and error, um, but it doesn't seem like it's gotten put into a permanent hierarchy yet, um, but I was able to find it um, online through, through searching. So another sort of intermediate step, it seems, before the records are published online. Um, and because I found Kona so useful, I actually imported it into Embark, which was pretty easy actually. Um, so I just created a text file and um, you can see that Kona is the top um, hierarchy. And then each tab is another step in that hierarchy. Um, and then the semicolons are the notes about that term, and the pipes are the um, additional um, variant terms uh, for that uh, preferred term. So I started off pretty simply of just importing the terms that we needed, and as um, more terms are added, I can amend the, the source structure in Embark. And just to give you kind of a visual of what that looks like in Embark. You can see here the top 
hierarchies we have are AAT, um, the iconographic authority, and then the SNITE local. So the SNITE local was those flat terms that I was talking about before where people were just adding them into the keyword module without putting them into a hierarchy. So I just use this for any pending terms that haven't been published yet as a holding place for them. Um, and then you can see that the iconographic authority shows up as its own um, thesaurus in Embark. And then this is just the next step underneath it. So um, this is the work that I've been doing so far um, in Embark. And I was hoping it would help uh, jumpstart a discussion about controlled vocabularies today. Great. Thank you, Hannah. That was really enlightening. I have, I have a little bit of experience with Getty, so it's, it's, I didn't even realize until you brought this up to me initially that people actually contributed to the thesaurus. Um, so, yeah, so if anyone has any um, questions, you can, you know, feel free to unmute yourselves or type it into uh, the chat box here, um, or add it to the agenda, or whichever way works for you. But um, I'm just curious if anyone else has any experience with um, adding terms to Getty or really any other controlled vocabulary. Or, I mean, I don't know what the extent of most folks' experience is with it. Um, I'll, uh, I'll uh, jump in. This is Sarah Osborne Bender. Um, previously, I was at the National Museum of Women in the Arts, and a project that I did there was to uh, compile the names of all of the women artists that had been displayed uh, on the walls of the museum over its uh, I, can't, I think we were at our 40th anniversary. And because it was such a focused collection, I mean, such a focused exhibition program, there were a lot of uh, artist names that were um, either not in ULAN because they were women or because they were regional artists. And so I was able to submit about 2,800 names to the Getty via a spreadsheet. Um, I know that they prefer uh, transfer of XML, but I, I was not, I wasn't up, up for that, but uh, they, they were able to add the names and it was a really satisfying um, project. Uh, and I know that they are working with um, generating an, an open refine tool that will help clean up data. Um, I don't know whether Hannah has had any experience using that. I have used Open Refine for some cleanup projects that I've done in Embark, but I haven't used it specifically to map um, or to match ULAN or AAT terms. I think the problem is that you need an API that you can hit. Um, and I think you can do that with like Viob, for instance, um, but I don't, that's probably what Getty's working on. I don't think they have that um, capability yet. I've worked some with um, submitting uh, name authority records through NACO. Um, Sherman Clark has actually helped me <laughs> when I first started doing that. Um, but it's kind of a, a handful, maybe a month. So not a huge like import process, just one or two. Um, but I'll, as we get, um, photo books that are in our collection, there will a lot of times be new authors, new artists that won't have a record already. So I'll just make new records for them as they come up. Um, so I don't have any experience with adding new records to Getty Thesauri. Um, so I guess my question is, do they ever reject terms that are submitted? Do they provide reasoning for when they do this? Or could anyone speak a little bit more about that? 
Yeah, I would love um, to learn more about that process. Um, I have been on there, Getty has like a nice blog that I typically read and I think they have an older post about that, um, a little bit about that process, but like I said, it's still kind of a black box for me and I kind of wonder if maybe that's why it takes a while for terms to get added because they do go back and double check sources and it seems like they they edit the contributions that I submit um, to fit their style or voice or whatever a bit better. Um, but again, this is all just me kind of um, learning as I go. I don't really know um, the answer. So if anyone else has a contribution, I would love to hear it. I guess I have a question. If anybody knows of any um, reconciliation for NACO, because I wasn't able to find any. Um, there's a project that something like doing an open refine would be really helpful, but I haven't been able to find anything like that. What do you mean reconciliation, Caroline? Um, like the, the one that was just posted, um, that would kind of line everything up with um, names in ULAN or something. Um, one that would work with um, Library of Congress authority files. Just to find where they match, where they have the same records for the same person? Yeah, um, I have a big set of artist files um, and it's just a, a bunch of different artist names that I'm trying to kind of match them up without having to go in individually because they're like 9,000. Um, so I can jump in on that, um, Caroline. Um, and at, uh, on the, excuse me. Um, so we are currently on the Mellon Collections Management Commons project um, at five colleges. Um, we've been working on a data enrichment project and um, as part of that, we have been um, using um, pretty successfully the um, Getty OpenRefine um, reconciliation service for AAT. Um, but at the moment, we're also um, working on um, reconciling uh, against LC. And what I found um, is helpful is there's a, a couple of, and I can drop them in the group chat, um, there's a couple of reconciliation services that are um, hosted that go through VIAF, um, but you can bring in LC terms for um, people like name authorities. Um, it doesn't work um, as well, I've found, for things like LCSH, um, but I've had some success with um, the people authorities and the geographic authorities bringing in um, the uh, and reconciling um, through VIAF. So I can put a link to the, the GitHub, um, the, the reconciliation service that I've been using in there. Oh, great. That would be really sure. helpful. Thanks. Absolutely. Uh, just so folks know, I did add um, comments from the chat into uh, the shared notes just because there's some really good information in there. So thank you for sharing that. Um, do, do we have any more questions or comments on Getty controlled vocabularies? Um, I'm gonna try, hopefully my internet holds up with the video for now <laughs> to turn it off for a bit. Um, so 
feel free to continue adding to the shared notes um, even after the meeting if you know you come across a link or something that'll be helpful um, and I don't know um, anything you want to add Hannah before we wrap up or just happy to hear all the conversation that's come out of this so far. Um, Cause like I said, I just been kind of playing around with things on my own. And I just wondered how many other institutions were contributing um, and how, how other institutions contributed. So it was nice to hear um, that some people are using the batch process um, to contribute to Getty. Um, since, like I said, I've only ever ever used the online forum um, and just hopefully encourage anyone who hasn't to, to try it out. Well, this was great. Thank you so much for bringing this topic to us for this meeting and providing um, a little demonstration of your process and workflow. Um, Looks like uh, this is Kylie. I can I can also add a um, just because it seems I, I know that we started by talking about Getty vocabularies, um, and I did just uh, send um, a link to the meeting notes to someone at the Getty who's going to share them with someone in Getty vocab. So if there are any questions that people want answered, they can put them in the meeting notes. Um, and I'll also add at the um, at the just at the Frick, we're doing some of this work, but through Wikidata. So, um, Wikidata has um, is pretty well integrated into OpenRefine. So that's how we've been um, reconciling, and we've also started um, a project of adding names um, from our artist files to Wikidata just in the past two weeks. Um, and Wikidata is also a repository that um, where other identifiers could live. So that's also another, I think there's a, a tool that someone mentioned that could be a, a VF tool that could be a good uh, in between for getting some other identifiers. So I mean, Wikidata is significantly less authoritative than any of these other controlled vocabularies we're talking about. So you have to use it with some caution. Um, and sort of verify everything if you're bringing it back into your own system. But I just wanted to add that as another kind of tool in this conversation. If you need something that's more um, kind of nimble, uh, and maybe Mary can even um, chime in about how uh, we're using Wikidata for BidFrame and the conversations around um, BidFrame, uh, Wikidata and BidFrame that have been taking place. I don't know if Mary wants to say anything about that. Yeah, sure. So um, some of you might know about the Wikidata affinity group calls that happen biweekly, and they go through a bunch of Wikidata tools um, and how they're applicable to a lot of like data projects. And that's really interesting. Um, the Frick itself, we also have a very large a photo archive with about 44,000 artist file names or artist names that we're um, trying to include in our um, bib frame records for those artist files. And one of the problems we've encountered is only about 50% of those artists, artists are in any sort of controlled vocabulary. And so how do we create those um, authorities in a like more rapid linked data environment that doesn't really allow for the time for an authority to be approved. And so the workaround for that is to create Wikidata items for these artists and then tie that to our bib frame record. And so it's sort of early days. And as Carly said, we've sort of been working on this and it is kind of daunting because it's a huge <laughs> set of names to try to um, grapple with. But the goal is that as we work through creating these records in bib frame that we'll start to be able to create records for artists that currently don't have any sort of presence in any controlled vocabulary or authority or anything like that. And so, yeah, it's baby steps, but um, our profile in the LD4P um, software includes a link to um, 
to Wikidata as a potential um, access point for the artist name. So that's sort of like the most progress we've made just so far. But it'll be really interesting to see how this goes. And I think it'll be a great opportunity to sort of open up uh, access to so many of these artists that are sort of otherwise very much siloed in the photo archives to the institution that they belong to. Um, so yeah, I think that'll be very exciting. And in uh, part of that, um, sorry to go on and on, we've included uh, or created a property within the wiki data items so that we can point back to our institution as a resource for holdings. Um, and I think if more institutions keep doing that, in addition to having all of the other identifiers that point back to ULAN or BIAF or whatever, that it allow, um, creates some sense of authority within those items, which I think is valuable. And I'm adding uh, links to the LD4 Wikidata Affinity Group. And I know too that um, OCLC has done a number of reports about using Wikidata for authority work that I'll also add to the meeting notes. 